I'm a new hope, with Cell finally defeated at the hands of Krillin. Though at the cost of both of their lives, Goten must now push forward as the lone savior of Earth remaining. While Earth Zero reunites with his friends in Otherworld, we're taken to where this all started. As the androids left the future in ruins, Bulma is able to flee the planet right as Cell made his appearance to absorb them, and she's left only to assume the worst of her son's fate. So she alone went on a quest to find new Namek. This is part 10 of an ongoing series and was created by DB New Hope. Support him and catch up fully using the links below. Future Timeline Year 798 More than 30 years have passed since the appearance of Dr. Jiro's androids on Earth. The planet's greatest remaining scientist finds herself floating through the depths of space. Not long ago, she would flee from her home with her son never returning from his latest trip to the past. And a new, even more horrible monster emerging as the androids still run loose. She narrates to herself that it might have been like finding a needle in a haystack, but she's finally located New Namek. When it was restored, it was intentionally placed in an obscure part of the universe to help keep us safe from would-be invaders. She then uses voice recognition technology to have one of her devices generate a report on the ship's remaining energy levels. Currently, there's 27% of the fuel left. To reach the new targeted destination, a total of 18% will be required, before finally announcing that it will take 14 days before arrival. Something that sounds perfect to our scientist. At this rate, she'll be there soon. Only two weeks left to go. And she'll finally have the chance to save Earth. Again calling out to the AI, named Grief26. Possibly an, albeit depressing, play on words with her father, Grief. It may be a fourth wall break as May 26 was the date of the Cell games in the other timeline. Either way, she commands full power ahead towards new Namek. But in the same timeline, we jump back to Earth a few years ago. The following is likely the events that caused Bulma to leave the planet. Cell touches down in his imperfect form, noticeably giving the androids a bit of trouble. 18 hisses to know how a stupid roach could be this strong. The creature snarls that it seems like they haven't been listening to him. He is Cell, the ultimate warrior created by Dr. Jero's computer. The data instilled into him is clear. By absorbing the two of them, he will be granted his perfect form, and then his power will know no bounds. 17 barks for this dirty bug to shut up. What is he talking about? He himself is the strongest android ever created. His sister backs us up by asking if he thinks they'll simply allow themselves to be absorbed by a freak of nature like him. He's gravely mistaken. Erfo retorts that they should be honored to have the chance to be part of the universe's greatest warrior. But anyway, it's not like he's giving them a choice. He will absorb them both, willingly or not. Bug got vaporized. What was his name again? <laughs> Allow me to remind you! I am Cell! Able to get a hold of 18, the creature cackles that there's no use in fighting back. She was created merely to help him achieve perfection. Shouting as he swells with power. He's done it. Although it's unlikely the twins would be able to defeat him together, now in a semi perfect state, 17 alone stands absolutely no chance. Turning to the remaining cyborg, Cell chortles that now it's his turn. Again in the year 798. She quickly finds herself in front of New Namek without incident. The AI calls out that the main objective has been reached. Preparing herself. 
She tells Grief 26 to initiate landing protocol. The ship plants itself on the soil and announces the landing a success. About to set foot on the green world for the first time. Well, more or less the first time in several decades. Bulma figures that's about time. Slowly disembarking and getting a look at her surroundings. Even if it is new Namek, it's identical to the old one. To think it's been over 35 years since their adventures against that freak Frieza. This makes her feel old. But any which way, now she has to locate the Dragon Balls. Using her radar, they appear to be scattered all over the place. She remembers that the Namekians said that each one was guarded by a village, so it's likely they retained that practice since migrating here. Closest one is about 40 kilometers south. She remembers that she needs to be careful when flying over the water. The last thing she needs is to get this far only to be eaten by one of their giant fish. Grabbing a capsule. She opens it to give her a quicker means of travel. She takes off and makes her way to the nearest village. But the question must be asked, why haven't any Namekians already come to greet her? Surely they would have noticed a spaceship landing on their planet after the events from before. Regardless, she finds herself right where she needs to be. And just to address the aforementioned statement, there doesn't appear to be any sign of stress or destruction. A couple locals are spotted below and one is even seen gathering water. Getting a closer look, it appears to be business as usual for the Namekians. In this village, they continue their rituals of gardening, mentoring the youngsters, and someone's even getting a new house. As they finally spot Bulma coming in fast. Though causing a slight panic, she apologizes to barge in like this. She explains that her name is Bulma and she comes from planet Earth. Stepping away from her vehicle, she furthers that she's met a lot of the natives that should still be here. A little more than 35 years ago when Frieza invaded the old Namek. After his explosion, all the Nameks wished back with the Dragon Balls came to stay with her on Earth for a few days. But with little response from anyone, she questions if they remember. But what? She was there when Frieza attacked? Does this mean she's one of his allies? Of course no! Not at all! She just, uh... She... That's when Mori enters the scene with perfect timing. He assures his children not to be afraid. Bulma is an old friend and doesn't have any ties to Frieza. Quite the opposite, actually. Because of her and her friends, the Namekians were able to survive. Swinging her head around, the Earthling is quick to recognize the Elder. With the situation simmering, he asks her to forgive this inconsiderate welcome. The majority of the inhabitants of this village were not yet born when the other Namekians were on Earth. Her arrival today is no surprise either. Mori's most gifted student sensed a familiar key heading towards Namek. Coming to the surprise of the space traveler, his most gifted student? Who could that be? Regardless, he is sure said pupil is going to be happy to see her. A bit confused. The Namekian in question isn't long to make himself known. It's Dende, who bids Bulma a warm hello. In this timeline, he was never taken to Earth by Goku to become the new Guardian. Our heroine recognizes him right away. She can't believe he's here too. She gushes how happy she is to see him. He's grown up so much she would never have recognized him. And as a matter of fact, he's happy to see her as well. And she too has grown quite old. But what the heck is wrong with him? She thought Namekians were supposed to be polite people. Who assures her it was a compliment? On Namek, looking old is considered a sign of wisdom. Offering an awkward apology. Dende moves the conversation along and inquires what brings her here anyway. Exuding a heavy sigh, she hopes he has a little time for this, because it's quite a lot. And unfortunately, she doesn't come here bearing good news. Growing serious, Dende resolves that what she has to say will not be pleasant. He suggests they move this to the Elder's house. A few hours pass as Bulma spares no detail in the events of the last 30 odd years. Everything from Goku's heart virus to the androids, the fall of Earth's defenders, her invention of time travel, 
which is why her son didn't accompany her on this dangerous journey. And of course the arrival of Cell. Without much to comfort her, Dende can only apologize that she's been through so many terrible things since the Namekians got their new home. Moriadine, if only they knew, they would have been able to help. With the obvious solution already in mind, he utters that he'll notify the village chiefs to gather the Dragon Balls. So in record time, now that the task is done, they can summon Puranga. You have summoned me. Now, speak your wishes. I shall grant you three, whatever they are. It having been so long since Shenron was summoned, and never really getting to see much of Pranga up close, Bulma forgot how impressive all this stuff was. The Elder instructs that she can state her wishes in her own native language. Pranga will understand. He's no longer limited to the Namekian dialect. A change that likely shouldn't have been made. For the sake of convenience, it works great in this situation though. Turning to the Almighty Dragon, she states that her first wish is this. Her son Trunks traveled to the past 13 years ago. She wishes for him to be alongside of her on Namek. With a pause, Ranga explains that he cannot grant this wish. It's beyond his power. Trunks died in a different timeline. Only the Dragon Balls from the era he currently belongs to can bring him back. She must state another wish. While well, the news of her son's passing hits hard, she wants Trunks to know how sorry she is. It was her stupid idea in the first place to send him back to the past. Then they moves forward to comfort her. They still have three wishes, so not all is lost. Maybe they can figure something out. Who appreciates the kindness, but she's prepared herself for this eventuality. She questions if the dragon still has limits regarding how long a person's been dead and his ability to bring him back. Another thing she needn't worry herself with. Since he's been upgraded, Runga no longer has any such restriction. Though as eternal beings do, Kuranga begins to grow impatient as he growls that she's ready to finally speak her wishes. And with that, she has her first. She would like him to undo something that happened several years ago in the past. Although this information is hidden from the reader, this is a request he can grant. She can consider it done. So just like that, Bulma's first wish was granted by Puranga. Whatever the wish may have been, Earth still lies in ruins. Before a pair of boots thud on the ground, a voice wonders aloud what just happened. He remembers this place. It's where he was before. He's back on Earth! But how? How could this possibly be? Future Gohan has been brought back to life. With the wheels turning to get Trunks' future back to its once peaceful state, the question remains whether Bulma wished everybody back killed by the androids, or for some reason just Gohan. As she has two wishes remaining, what else can she do to undo the horrors that have been done? And even if she does, is Cell still lurking around our world, leaving our hero, or heroes, essentially dead in the water once more? <laughs>